That was South of the River by Tom Mish. Did you like that one, Suzanne? Yeah, I've never heard that song before. So, yeah, that was that was nice. Quite mellow. Quite mellow. To bring us into the uh, a mellow mood more, um, having talked about Afghanistan in the first um, hour, we were talking about hybrid working, you and I, because I, I uh, we noticed that in Bucharest um, there's a whole situation where now in offices you've got disinfection robots and thermal body cameras and they're talking in in the guardian again about um maybe this is the way uh the new offices are going to look what's your take suzanne i think we're gonna have some interesting times over the next few years so there's i suppose looking at infection control so Actually, about two years ago, I do sometimes work from my friend's office and they installed these um, funny door handles on the toilets that when you press them, it squirts hand gel onto you. So you're sort of getting your hands disinfected as you leave the toilet. Sounds good. Um, Sounds a bit Japanese. How does it? Okay. Um, And I think there's been an outbreak of norovirus uh, which was what prompted that to happen. Um, so I suppose there's being very aware of infection when we're in the offices. Um, and I suppose I was talking to my friend a while ago because when you see Japanese tourists over here wearing face masks or a few years ago, I'd always made the assumption that it was about pollution but actually, it's seen as a courtesy, isn't it? That if you've got a cold, it's actually courteous to wear a mask so you're not infecting other people. So I hope we take a bit of a positive from COVID about infection control and courtesy to other people and, and those type of things. Um, and then I suppose as a, as a psychologist, an occupational psychologist, there's looking around the hybrid working of, will we be doing a mount from home? Some I've got quite a few friends who are self-employed. Some of them have realised that they don't need offices, that everybody can meet remotely and it's a big expense and maybe not nece- necessary and that money can be spent on a meeting room to have a team meeting every so often. The thing is, Suzanne, as a, as a psychologist, you know that social interaction is really important and we'll go on to talk about... Um, dementia and and that kind of prevention uh, later on in the show but um, one of the things that a a doctor was saying this morning was about you know the Mediterranean diet and social interaction being really important and I'm freelance I work from my home and because of Covid I can't go into um, the BBC uh, nowadays Um, I am allowed to come to River Radio which is a blessing because it uh, is my my Sunday place of place of work and I prep at home but and it's lovely. I don't know how I would feel if I didn't see Sam, if I didn't see the other people here in studio, and mm-hmm. physically drive over to Marlow. So, meeting. I haven't seen you physically for ages because you're mm-hmm. in Manchester. We've had, um, we've had the pandemic, and and I'm in London, mm-hmm. and I, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing you. Uh, we're so close, but um, that is important, Suzanne, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. And I think there is going to be that balance of, you know, maybe it being quite nice, people not having a commute every day and and that stress that's associated with that. But also having that office banter, you know, the whole water cooler chat and, and those kind of things. And we have become quite separated from each other. So I think a lot of companies are going to be looking at, well, maybe you don't need to be in the office nine to five, but you could do some days at home or, you know, work around what's flexible for children or getting things delivered. Or, you know, if you've got a meeting at 11 o'clock, maybe it's not necessary to come in the office before and go straight to meeting and work from home and, and those type of things. So I'm hoping that we get a good balance really, between people having that ability to work from home when it's convenient and, like you're saying, you know, get that office contact when you need it. How do you manage sort of being freelance? I I always call it office squatting. I squat in a friend's office when I feel like I need company. Actually, um, 
to be very frank, I do a lot from home. I have interns who are in my bubble, journalist interns who help me at home. So I have a little bit of team feeling that way. And um, I do have a really nice lobby in my gym. And uh, I go and make sure that I, you know, after after a workout or whatever it is I do in the gym, which I guess my gym is my version of the pub, um, I go and sit in the lobby and I'll work or I'll meditate or, or do whatever I want to do over there and, and chat to people as well. So I try and make sure, um, and I do, I do like going out into the park um, for park run and things like you. So I think you walk a bit more than me, but I try and get out because I think that daylight um, is supposed to be really, really good for our mental health, right? Yeah, apparently this, uh, I've got this from Ronga and Chatterjee as well. We need to get Ronga and Chatterjee on the show at some point, don't we? I'm sure he um, <laughs> I have interviewed him, I do know him. Oh, of course you know him. You know everybody, Rani. <laughs> you, know, you know a fair amount of people yourself, and uh, Sam's going to be telling us about some excellent people he knows in our in our next topic um or or when he when he, when we turn to football but